The Pretentious Young Ladies by Moliere Madeline Good heavens! If everybody was like you, a love story would soon be over. Matrimony ought never to happen till after other adventures. A lover, to be agreeable, must understand how to utter fine sentiments, to breathe soft, tender, and passionate vows. His courtship must be according to the rules. In the first place, he should behold a fair one of whom he becomes enamoured, either at a place of worship, or when out walking, or at some public ceremony. Or else he should be introduced to her by a relative or a friend, as if by chance, and when he leaves her he should appear in a pensive and melancholy mood. For some time he should conceal his passion from the object of his love, but pay her several visits, in every one of which he ought to introduce some gallant subject to exercise the wits of all the company. When the day comes to make his declarations, which generally should be contrived in some shady garden walk, while the company is at a distance, it should be quickly followed by anger, which is shown by our blushing, and which, for a while, banishes the lover from our presence. He finds afterwards means to pacify us, to accustom us gradually to hear him depict his passion, and to draw from us that confession which causes us so much pain. After that come the adventures, the rivals who thwart mutual inclination, the persecutions of fathers, the jealousies arising without any foundation, complaints, despair, running away with, and its consequences. Thus things are carried on in fashionable life, and veritable gallantry cannot dispense with these forms. But to come out point-blank with a proposal of marriage, to make no love but with a marriage contract, and begin a novel at the wrong end, once more, father, nothing can be more tradesmanlike, and the mere thought of it makes me sick at heart.